and today I want to talk to you about something well kind of naughty I guess so I just want to put a little warning out there that if you're sensitive to words like sex or sperm or eggs or fertilization um, I suggest you just scroll on to the next video but for most of you I'm guessing I've piqued your interest so today I'm gonna to talk about plant sex in particular because plants do have sex and they also make things like sperm and eggs. So I'm gonna talk about two main topics. I'm gonna to talk about asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. So with asexual reproduction, usually when you have an A before a word, it means without. So just like asymmetry means without symmetry. So asexual reproduction is without sex basically. And this is where plants are just making the exact same copies of themselves. So on a cellular level, these plants are taking all of their genetic material, they're replicating it um, exactly, and that new copy is going into the new cell. And it just does it again and again and again and again. So whenever we make a rooted cutting off a plant, this is asexual reproduction or if we're doing a leaf pulling on a ping and rooting that or on a succulent, that's asexual reproduction. Um, we also see asexual reproduction on little pygmy sundews where they make the gemme. And Daniela has made some really awesome videos all about gemme and how fascinating they are. So these little gemme are these cute little nuggets that these little sundews have made and they make them the same way. It's asexual reproduction. So they've made little exact copies of themselves in this little thing that pops off and makes a new plant. Um, asexual reproduction is also um, happening in tissue culture. So we're just replicating the cell. We're making exact same copies of the cell and making new plants from that. So genetically identical copies. In sexual reproduction, plants are actually having sex. So on a cellular level, we are taking genetic material from the mother plant, for instance, and combining that with the genetic material of the father plant. So in asexual reproduction, that's all happening in the vegetative part of the plant. But in sexual reproduction in plants, this is happening in the flower. So here's a typical flower here. This is actually a helium for a flower, um, but I picked it because it has this really typical morphology for a flower so that you can see there's a whorl of sepals and petals. Then you have a whorl of anthers in here and that's where the pollen is formed. And in the middle, you have the ovule and the style and the stigma, which is all like kind of the female structure there. So in pollen, Inside a pollen grain, plants actually have sperm cells. So plants make sperm too, isn't that cool? They even have little flagella, they all have unique morphology. Um, and then in the female part, in the ovule, that's where we have the egg cells. So plants are so cool because flower morphology differs wildly. So you can have flowers that only have male parts on them. You can have flowers that only have female parts on them. Nepenthes is a really great example where plants either have male flowers or they have female flowers. So you can get all sorts of combinations of this. Um, and then the shapes of the flowers can vary um, incredibly. And then also the placement of like these sexual reproductive organs can change a lot. Um, but I picked this one just because it's really nice and easy to show you right now. So when plants have sex or when any animal has sex, basically what we're doing is we're getting a sperm cell to an egg cell. And the reason we want to do this is because we want to combine genetic material from the male part to the female part. So we talked about asexual reproduction that's just making a copy of all the genetic material and just putting that in a new cell. Okay, in sex, what happens is in these specialized cells like egg cells or sperm cells, what we're doing is we're taking all that genetic material and what we have are two copies of everything. We have a copy that we got from our mom, we got a copy from our dad. And those copies pair up. So we have pairs of everything. In humans, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. 
and in plants, that number changes from species to species. So what happens in the sex cells is those pairs split up. So now we have a cell, like a sperm cell or an egg cell, that only has one copy, one copy from those pairs. And that way, when a sperm cell and an egg cell unite, they're back to having a pair. Does that make sense? So you're basically taking, you know, you're starting with pairs of everything in every cell, splitting that apart so you have single chromosomes in a sperm cell or in an egg cell, and then when an egg cell and a sperm cell combine again, the pairs come back together. So that's how you get material from your sperm cell to your egg cell, and you get a complete set again. So this is happening every time we do fertilization in a flower. The, the pollen in the stamens here, um, that's where the sperm cells are. They actually land on the stigma of the female part. The pollen is this really cool cell that once it lands on the stigma, it actually grows a little tube down to the ovaries, down to the egg cells, and the sperm cells inside of it travel down the tube. They unite with the egg cell, and that's when we get fertilization. And then we get um, seeds from there and that's how every seed is unique. Every new plant from that is unique because the combination of, first of all, the, the chromosomes dividing to go into the sperm cell or the egg cell is, it's kind of random, right? Like which chromosomes go into each one. And then when they unite, it's random again. And then there's all sorts of other little things that happen that make that combination unique for every single seed. So you get this like lottery of genes in each seed. So those are the major differences for plants between asexual and sexual reproduction. And um, we could just go on and on about plant sex here. It's so fascinating. So I encourage you to, you know, to do more research on it if you're interested or if you have questions or um, comments please comment below we would love to hear from you and uh, yeah I hope I get to talk about plant sex more in the future because it's an exciting topic around here thanks guys